Alors Sylvain n'a pas eu <laughs> My name is Sylvain Pouy. I'm Montrealer, Québécois, Canadian. I've been living here forever. I'm the one who's responsible uh, organizing events here, and I conceive the playground here for composers. I'm a composer. I'm a guitarist, an instrumentist. I do improvisation, and in fact, since uh, 30 years now, uh, my entire life is around music, whether it be uh, interpretation, composition, or um, anything that's technology, or uh, uh, sound, uh, programming. Hey, welcome here. This is a big black room, extraordinary room that allows us to do everything. So the first thing that you do when you start working in a place like this with all kinds of people, you quickly determine the limits of uh, the problem, which is to do everything. So the first limit, you notice that there's eight speakers. So we have eight speakers, there's four here. That's for... Uh, the piece itself, the stereo used by everybody. There's four other speakers here. And all of these settings were not decided at the beginning. I put them out in the room and the composers decided to move these around and whatever. But that was one of the things that uh, they had in hand, that the environment could be flexible and uh, modular, super important. The other thing that's important, each saxophone has a microphone. There again, here in the center, we have more than 500 microphones, and so I couldn't sell these composers. Just come into the mic park and help yourself. So we make choices on the, the different things that we can use. So we took a classic, which is a clip microphone for saxophone. Uh, it goes right on the saxophone, excellent sound. So for real-time treatment, most recordings, it's perfect. And all of this is linked through console that allows one to do the routing, uh, to direct the different channels, to put them in here, to push them out through the speakers, put them in the computer here, draw them out again. And I prepared a recording station that allows us to record all the signals, whatever the source is. It's one thing. I mean, it's quite simple. Electronics I understand very well. It's um, integrated in my way of functioning. Um, I'm also a sound man, so I understand all the involvements. Uh, the most complicated is to create the event, is to create a moment, uh, is to uh, manage time, because like uh, that's what it is about music. It's like the tension, uh, the break, uh, uh, to create some intelligence in that line. That's fascinating. So when I came here in the studio uh, for my own uh, composition, uh, I had three objectives. And the first objective was quite simple, was to discover the quattro, uh, besides the saxophone also, because like, uh, you know very well when you do improvisation in jazz, the uh, parameters are not the same. Like there's an uh, impro context, you give that to the person, so to be able to write. So we spoke of different modes of playing, whatever, all kinds of work related, I would say, to the mechanics of uh, the instrument itself. Another important element for me was uh, the room, the chance of this workshop. We could do the workshop where the concert is going to happen, which is quite extraordinary. I want to leave here with three uh, different pictures, uh, as different as possible. Uh, what I did is I thought out and I wrote down some uh, software that could uh, uh, allow to target that, and uh, I explored different playings with uh, the interpreter, so long, short interactions, and I created, generally before the concept or the concert, I create material for the instrumentalist. So once again, to anticipate what uh, the problems are going to be, the, s the sound, the mixities, like the answers, to be able to start dreaming uh, the piece in its own setting, that's extraordinary. And so given I will have my basics, my boards, I will have the memory, and I've recorded everything. So everything that they said on certain elements, like, uh, you know, I've got examples of all of that, of, uh, of particular modes, and, and perhaps because uh, 
I have a bit of a jazz man approach. A, a jazz man has to integrate things to be able to improvise stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, for the next two months will be to listen to the sessions without really having any uh, specific purpose or just listen to them, playing around uh, um, so we could play the harmony. Okay. Very simple. Four chords. Okay, great. So that it's very simple, basic element allows us to sculpture things. Uh, also, what's important for me is at the beginning to have a kind of a an extra musical argument. It determined my playground, and the playground is like on all kinds of levels, technologically, instrument-wise, it's at the level of the capacity also of all that can be done, the instrumentalist capacity, but also linked to the space, to the room, and it needs to be linked for me to something I want to say, so something that has to poetically lead the whole project. Musically, I want to get thresholds, small distortions, moments of, of fragility. You know, notes where the sax is like a, is all fragile and whatever. We did many sounds of that nature, very soft, gentle sounds. We did one session. I recorded uh, these sounds, and I can listen to the microphone very, very close to uh, getting the breath. I remember Andre that day, like he had done some cycling, whatever, and his breath was really fast, you know, but that was extraordinary. That's the kind of thing I want to get, that kind of fragility that brings the, the, the nervousness and all of that. That was great. So, some exploration with them, different modes of playing, and of course, the link with the machine. So, we'll do example two. Uh, so, I group these different modes in uh, three major sections. First, very simply, long sounds. How do we do long sounds? How do we do to uh, modify them, the pitch and all that? And uh, one thing I was interested in a lot was the vibrato, and to be able to play with the speed of the vibrato, a bit like a, I was interested in that kind of... Uh, can you make one? Uh, give us one of these? Yeah. I'm hugely interested in that kind of sound. Maybe we can do it with the first chord here. So that's already much more interesting, more complex a bit. Uh, so by doing this, uh, another super important aspect is improvisation. So creating this uh, mode of playing in different heights, like we did some improvisation, to which I added a very simple treatment, a treatment that has the role of adding uh, an extra layer of information. Uh, you know, it's in real time, but it's a kind of a counterpoint to... Uh, So this is an uh, example of long sounds. Now short sounds. So we did all kinds of different short sounds. And one I really liked was uh, the hit on the, the mouthpiece here. I love that. 
there's a very interesting uh, sound here. The other one was the multiphonic with a slap. And uh, as an example, like the regular note, remember we do each of the three th sounds depending on the chords here. Right. To that, I added uh, a treatment that allowed to round that out and add some rhythm. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. I, I, yeah, you were talking to us. Uh, all right. So an instrument that had some chaos involved. So I'll give cues here, sorry. Uh, and they'll do some rhythmic clusters for each of these segments here. Let's just open this one up. Okay, another important element for me, because there's something I try to avoid, a little challenge that I have. I don't like when the instrument, uh, when the players have pedals, when they work like this. And I try to limit that, like uh, I hate uh, the clicking of the pedals, like uh, now we have to go from one section to the next. Uh, so I try to think of means. Uh, so that the interpreters can amongst themselves kind of trigger the different effects and interpret the effects, but not necessarily themselves, but maybe another instrument uh, gives an indication to, oh, well, that's more in this score, and that will influence the treatment of the first saxophone. So I have a few examples to give you here. The first one is, uh, in fact... Uh, Soprano is going to be manipulated, let me put it this way, by the tenor. And for that, in a way that it can be a, a kind of a solo and not a duo, uh, he'll blow in front of the uh, microphone uh, to get the dynamics here. So Chantal will play a long note and you'll punctuate the end of the notes. That really allows one to create simple effects, but... Uh so to create these kinds of interactions between the musicians uh, with those treatments, and that I can write them out, actually it's more flexible uh, to be able to follow these things. Uh, let me give you another example here. It's going to be now um, the baritone will treat the alto. We'll make like a short uh, sounds. And uh, in fact, he'll do the small sounds and he will pick amongst these notes and uh, uh, things that he'll uh, tie into. So let's go.
the advantage is that there'll be no better detector of an attack than another uh, musician, you know, like a good example. It's like, do something like ta 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 as an example. So it allows that kind of synchronicity, uh, you know. So now it's actually going to be uh, the soprano that is going to treat the baritone. And the purpose is to add a little gain here. Uh, so a zoom, And she's going to get the end of the sound with a new grain to kind of stretch it out. So here we go. Okay, so that's very important for me to explore these modes of playing because it's like, oh yeah, that mode reminds me of that kind of an effect and whatever, so we can do all the mixing. Now, our last one here, and not the least, of course, is the alto will now manipulate the tenor sax, and the tenor will play a note, but very low volume, almost the end of breath. Uh, and uh, he will change the ends of the notes here. Very simple. So this is what I did during my residency. Are there any questions? <laughs>